Hello friends and welcome to a new session with edupediaworld.com, your favorite portal for online education. In our previous session, we had started with the project management techniques and we had seen how to draw the network flow diagram. Network flow diagram forms the basis for the various methods used under the project management techniques and we had seen that the two most prominent project management techniques are the CPM and PERT. This session we shall see what basically we mean by CPM and PERT. We'll see where did they originate and what are the basic differences between both these methods. Here we go. To achieve the objectives of project management, network techniques or network planning models are widely used. And we had seen that the two most commonly used project management techniques are the PERT and the CPM. Both of these uses the network planning models, but PERT is used in research type of projects whereas CPM is used in all of non-research type projects. Let's begin with the critical path method. CPM was developed by E.I. DuPont, the numerous and company and Remington Rand in the year 1957. The first test was made in 1958 when CPM was applied to the construction of a new chemical plant. A milestone in the March 1959, the method was applied to maintenance shutdown at Duport Works in Louisville, Kentucky. And here, the unproductive time was reduced remarkably from 125 hours to 93 hours. And from here on, the success of critical path began. Well, what basically is the critical path method? Critical path is the longest path through the project network and the activities on these path are called the critical activities. Why? Because any delay in their execution will cause further delay in the project completion time. Thus, the critical path is the sequence of critical activities that forms a continuous path between the start of a project and its completion. This is critical in the sense that if any activity in this sequence is delayed, the completion of the entire project will be delayed. The critical path is usually shown by a thick line or a double line in the network diagram. Well, in other words, we can say that the length of the critical path is the sum of the individual times of all the critical activities lying on it and it defines the longest time to complete the project basically without any time gap between one and the other activity okay so a critical path has no time gap when we shift from one activity to the next and therefore we need to give critical uh, special attention to these activities the basic is to find and take care of these activities in a project. Now what is critical path analysis? It is the method of calculating the total project completion time by way of identifying the critical activities. The main objective in this is to estimate the total project duration and starting and finishing time of all the activities. This helps to check the actual progress against the scheduled duration of the project. Now, in case of the critical path method, that is the CPM, the duration of each activity is uniquely determined. And in case of PERT, an estimate of the completion time is determined based on three given times. And this is the basic difference between CPM and PERT, which we will see in the upcoming slides. And these three given times are the optimistic time, that is the minimum time required to complete the project, the pessimistic time, that is the maximum time required to complete the project, and the average, that is the most likely time. Well, the following factors required for project scheduling are determined in these methods. First is the total completion time of the project. Next is the earliest 
and the latest start time of each activity basically the start and the finish time of each activity the critical activities and the critical path and the float for each activity what basically we mean by float float of free time is the length of time in which a non-critical activity can be delayed or extended without delaying the total project completion time okay why non-critical activity well because it's only the non-critical activity which has time gaps between the activities in case of critical activities we've already seen that there is no time gap there is no chance or no way we can delay the activities and all of these are done by the forward and the backward pass methods we shall see the working of these in the subsequent uh, sessions the next session maybe we will see the forward and backward pass method and we'll use that to calculate the total completion time of the project the earliest and the latest start time of each activity and also the critical activities and critical path thereafter in one of the videos we will see how to calculate the float and we'll see in detail what basically the, uh, the floats are now coming to project evaluation and review technique PERT PERT was devised in 1958 by the Polaris Missile Program by the Pro Program Evaluation Branch of Special Projects Office of the US Navy held by the Lockheed Missile Systems Division and the consultant firm of Booz, Allen and Hamilton. So basically we see that it started, it originated in the US Navy. With the passage of time, PERT and CPM applications started overlapping and now they are used almost as single technique. Why? Because both PERT and CPM uses the same network flow diagram technique and they share the most common method of determination of critical path by representation of activities using network wherein we use the forward and the backward pass methods. However, there are some differences and the major differences are given below. CPM is deterministic whereas PERT is probabilistic. Uh, in case of CPM, it has just one estimate of the activity time and in case of PERT, we have seen that there are three estimates of activity time, namely the optimistic time, the pessimistic time and the most likely time. And we use these three to estimate the activity time of, the, uh, of each activity. Uh, in case of CPM, estimates of activity duration are based on historical data Whereas in case of PERT, estimates are uncertain and we talk of ranges of duration and the probability that an activity duration will fall into that range. It is used in projects that involve activities of uh, repetitive nature. Well, this is for CPM and for PERT, it's used in usually in one-time projects wherein we do not know the actual estimates of the time. And it's uh, and which involves activities of non-repetitive nature. Uh, in case of CPM, it allows an explicit estimate of cost in addition to time, whereas in case of PERT, it's basically a tool of planning and control of time. So those were the differences and this was just to understand what basically uh, we, uh, we understand uh, the differences between the CPM and PERT in the subsequent videos we we'll, shall see in detail how to use both of these. Thanks for watching Edupedia World videos.